program or what our program would look like today. But before that, I would like to honor some people or personalities joining us today for today's session. I can see uh, the Secretary General of the Association of African University, Professor Olushola Bandele, connected here. I think some of the speakers are also as, um, connected at the moment. We have Dr. Quinette K. Kingsley, who is representing Nigeria in this session connected. I see, I see uh, some of the, the, the presenters and the speakers for today's session connected. And we hope that after the introductions and a brief um, background to how or what our conversation or our celebration is going to be like, we would invite them to take the floor to have their speech. I also see the Honorable Man, His Excellency, the President of the Association of African University, Professor Bakri Said, connected. He would give us some keynote um, address before we start the session. Um, Dr. Faiza Osman could not join us here due to some emergency she had. And so, um, okay, I think Professor Faiza is connected. I would hand over to her to give us some opening and welcome or welcome address and overview of our events today. Dr. Faiza Osman is the director of the East Africa Regional Office of the Association of African Universities. Dr. Faiza Osman, if you are here, kindly take the floor to give us remarks and of course an overview of what our events or celebrations is going to be like. Thank you. Naomi, I think you should proceed. Well noted, Madam. Okay, I would like to call on His Excellency, the President of the Association of African University, Professor Bakri Said, to give us some keynote remarks for, before we start the event. Good morning, everyone. I, I was having a little bit of difficulty actually hearing. The sound was very low. I hope you can hear me. Hello? Yes, please, Prof. We can yes, hear you. Can hear. You can? Yes. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. yes Prof. We can hear you. Kindly speak. Yes. Yeah, hello? Yes, Professor Bakri, we can hear you. Can you speak? Oh, you can hear me, right. Good. Yes, please. Uh, well, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful for Dr. Pfizer for organizing this meeting. Uh, as you may know, the Association of African Universities has been organizing these celebrations annually since 2006. And we consider this as an extension to the general aim of the AAU in providing platforms for exchange of ideas and experiences between African universities on the key issues related to development. As you know, just before independence in most African countries, or immediately after independence, the colonial powers established usually a single university. But the African people had a lot of interest that education will play a leading role in bridging the gap between Africa and developing countries. Higher education has served Africa in many ways, mainly in providing human capital, which initially replaced the expatriates who left 
after independence, but subsequently they manned the different aspects of life. However, the aspirations of the African people were not completely uh, actualized. And in fact, the gap between Africa and developing countries kept expanding and Africa remained the least developed continent. And higher education itself over the years has been plagued by a lot of problems, which are uh, for to contribute to doing the issues of development. Uh, I'm calling, I'm, I'm participating in this meeting now from Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, where I am participating. The uh, United Nations Conference of the Parties, which is meeting now to discuss issues of global campaign to curb the rise in temperature on the planet. Now, Africa is the least continent contributing to greenhouse gas emissions, but it's the most affected by its effects and the effects of climate change are already here. And we are seeing that ending rainfall and concerning uh, development. And this will lead to a vicious cycle of, of displacement and conflict and so on. And conflict is one of the major hindrances of sustainable development. And so climate change now is at the heart of the interest of the AAU because it is affecting the lives of people uh, on this continent. And universities repositioning themselves in the public space in a way which enables them to be an effective partner in combating climate change. You know, uh, Africa is working towards realizing the international development agendas, that is the SDGs and the Agenda 2063, which is the roadmap of development in Africa. And unfortunately, there have already been some pessimistic uh, forecasts that most African countries are unlikely to achieve the SDGs by 2030. And that is even before the advent of COVID-19, which has hampered our ability to do that even more. And now climate change is really uh, affecting so many communities and threatening to wipe out actually, or it did actually wipe out some of the progress which was made in many African countries. So uh, there are a lot of challenges ahead and for African universities to really play a good role, they need to go back and review their social contract, become proactive in identifying the ambitions and aspirations of the African people. And that will put them in a good position to help governments uh, formulating and executing uh, adequate policies to, combat, to, to face or combat these challenges, which are mounting and, and increasing their effects on the daily lives of the, of the African people. Uh, we need to go into solidarity with all stakeholders, political authorities, uh, private sector, other societal organization, NGOs, which are interested in promoting the lives of, of Africans. And in that way, we make ourselves more relevant and uh, well, at the same time, we can contribute to uh, solving the problems of the, and, and, and combating the challenges facing sustainable development. But to do that, African universities have to examine themselves and ask themselves, are they really capable of playing this role? Uh, do we need to retrain our staff? Do we have enough capacity in Africa to do that? Or do we want to ask help from international agencies uh, and build linkages with developed countries? We have, for example, the, 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 the good example of the African Centers of Excellence, which is uh, funded by the World Bank and the relevant countries in Central and West Africa, and in which there is collaboration between research groups in Africa and other groups in developed countries. 
And uh, that experiment has shown actually this collaboration or partnership uh, can actually yield a lot of good. And I think we should be looking for such partnership to go beyond uh, just doing research on specific research topics for training PhDs into helping African universities into developing their capacities so they can play their envisaged role in helping government to achieve development for the people. I hope uh, you have a good day. I'm very pleased to have such a very esteemed line of speakers lined up. So I, I hope you have a good and successful day. I would like again to thank Dr. Faiza and the organizers, and I will thank all uh, the, the speakers for uh, willing to share their experiences with us for the sake of higher education uh, in Africa. Uh, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Bakri Said, for your warm remarks and, of course, your informative um, message to us. We we'll would now call on Professor Olushola Bandele Oyeole, the Secretary General of the Association of African Universities, to give us some warm remarks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to recognize the president of AAU, Professor Bakri Said, and all the other uh, people whose protocol have already been established. I let me welcome all of us, especially to this special program to mark the African Universities Day. The focus of this particular celebration this year is on open science. And it's my pleasure to briefly seize this opportunity to speak about open science. I'm aware of the misunderstanding surrounding the concept of open science. To some, open science connotes publication of science without going through the scientifically recognized peer review process. This is far from the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, open science has been described as the practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate and contribute. We contribute where the research data, lab notes, and other research processes are freely available under terms that will enable the reuse, the redistribution, and the reproduction of the research and its underlying data and methods. The UNESCO recommend, recommendation on open science defines open science as a movement aimed at making scientific research more transparent, efficient, and democratic while making the final work, along with its various supporting data and methodologies, findable and accessible. So ladies and gentlemen, open science is something that we need to support in, Af in the African research process because all that it entails is that when you do your research, Open science requires that your data that you generate in the research is openly available. So open science rests on the following. One, open data, that is the research data is made available. It also rests on open methodologies, whereby the methodologies you've used in your research work is also not made secret. Open science also demands what I call open notebook, open source and open access, we mean free access to the information and other materials that are connected with your research work. Ladies and gentlemen, in our focusing on open science in this African, African, uh, African University Week, we know the benefits of open science. Open science is a key tool for academic cooperation and information sharing and provides data upon which inclusive policy could be made in science and research, in our research. Ladies and gentlemen, as we discuss about open science in the next, in, in this celebration, I want universities in Africa to look deeply at the benefits of open science and let us do all that we can to ensure that research in Africa contributes to our development. Let me welcome us once again to this celebration and 
I look forward to other conversations that will be, be coming up in this special one that is meant for the East African region of AU. I, I will finally want to appreciate our coordinator, all the universities that are connected, and I wish us greater collaboration in the days ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Olushola Oyewole, for reiterating the need um, to have education or have more knowledge on open science and the relevance of it to research and publishing. Uh, we were supposed to take some keynote remarks from Professor Imadel Din Arade. Please pardon me because I'm, a, um, I'm from the West African session and I, I have no idea or how to pronounce correctly some of the names, so please pardon me. Um, he is the, the Vice Chancellor of University of Khartoum and also were to take some remarks from the President of AMU Commission on Mathematics Education in Africa. But I think that they are not connected at the moment. And so we'll just delve straight into our discussion for today's meeting. This discussion will also center on the main theme for the celebrations, which is open science bringing equity to research and publishing. I'd like to know if Mr. Felix E. Anyam, who is a data scientist at the Center for Health and Development at the University of Port Harcourt, Nigeria is connected. Kindly let me know if you are connected and then you take the floor to give your presentation on open data practices and research processes. All right, uh, Felix is here. All right, thank connected. you so much for joining us. Kindly thank you. All right, uh, you moderator, Dr. Feza is around. I don't know if you can proceed with the remarks. I don't know, thank you very much. Hello? 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 Yeah, Professor Osma, you can continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the African Regional Office and University of Khartoum, I would like to thank Professor Olo Ole, the Secretary General of the Association of African University, for your generous uh, support and assessment. Uh, secondly, I would like to congratulate uh, AU and ERU for its many achievements over the last past 20, 45 years. Ladies and gentlemen, since the creation of East African Office of the Association of African University 2018, there has been a, been a significant increase in the number of universities across East African continent calling for a pragmatic approach to foster collaborations across the region. ERO has response to some of the international challenges and adapt to meet the needs of our members by providing a platform or constitutions, debates, cooperation and collaborations. We have also provided leadership in identifying of some emerging issues and support for debating them. Uh, the African University Day, which she fall on November each year, it set aside to celebrate the establishment of AU in November uh, 1867. The day also provides an opportunity for critical dialogues targeted at improving the quality of African higher education toward the growth of the continents. Uh, open science uh, movement uh, first appeared in the early of 1880 in the United States of America, then very quickly spread to other regions of the world, North and South, in 2000. But this movement have not been received in the same way in the different regions of the continent. While the African countries have embarked on policies to open up published data since 2010, uh, the NEMROS has been less sponsored among uh, Francophone-speaking sub-Saharan countries. As for English-speaking countries, they very quickly become involved in the movement, and this is reflected in the capitals of the continent to uh, in the rank of countries, the term of weapons. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in Africa, we have many initiatives and we have many platforms that have been established and self uh, open science in Africa. Next to African Open Science Platform, EOSPA, uh, there are several sister initiatives such as East African Higher Commission Initiative for an East African Open Science Cloud of Health, EASCH, and Environment. 
also we have many others uh, initiative uh, like co-data and fair data also it help uh, africans uh, a lot in the open science uh, ladies and gentlemen as all body knows by 2015 african population will cross the two billion mark the majority of whom will be young and by 2025 a quarter of all young persons under 25 in the world will be African. Uh, they must be appreciated in power into the intellectual capitals that Africa needs, which gave them skills, especially in open science, technology, and innovations. Uh, in resources constrained countries, like East African countries, with crisis, civil wars, and political instability, open science faces several barriers comparing to developmental countries, which hinder its adopting and growth. Among the barrier to open science, including lack of policies from the governments, uh, local funders, and institutions regarding open science practice, lack of adequate human and infrastructure capacity for training on open science, little trust in open science from the researcher, and the lack of awareness and skill of open science practice. Uh, the advancement of scientific research and raising the next generation scientists in Africa depend largely on open science. The East African crisis has caused uh, discussions around open science very improbably, especially in the resources board setting like African where the practice of open science is very low. Open science can be tracked back to the Middle Age and is currently growing and entering the stage in many disciplines as introduced above that is happening in particular due to the opportunity that worldwide internet and new technology, uh, tools and communication channel deals and offering. Open science is a necessity and an instrumental to overcome the inquiries among researchers and institutions in financial positions among countries with different levels of development and in general among all cities from the global society. Lack of infrastructure, availability of tools and process that is open science in for low skills champion over science among East African speakers. Availability of infrastructure and capacity building or research design, data entry and use of cyber platform is in the need to the advantages of open science in Africa. Lack of deliberate policies and legal framework promising promoting open science from government, institution, and funder prevent the advancement of open science in East Africa. The availability of policies together with the provision of funds has improved open science in Europe and has placed it as one of the leading region of open science. The lack of open science awareness, in addition, hinder, hinders the open science among East African researchers. Uh, open science requires partnership and collaborations between stakeholders, including government, academic and research institution, research funder, researcher, librarians, publishers, information and communication technology experts, and end user of the research output. In the absence of this alliance, advancing open science in East Africa remaining challenges because these independencies are completely in the achieving open science. Addressing challenges of funding and leadership at different level of education, research, government, uh, may be uh, very vital in charting a new courses of open science in East Africa. Open science is an instrumental in developing in development of scientific community. As part of open science principle, researcher should accessible science uh, reusable uh, and reproducible. And there is this philosophy, a growing scientific community from various disciplines uh, is expected. Data and research information that available via open science sources platform could facilitate scientific collaboration and promote discussion among experts in the way. And I think the advancement of scientific research are raising the next generation scientists in East Africa depend largely on science at this. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused discussion around open science to reimburse globally, specifically in the resources poor sitting like 
uh, as a country of East Africa where the practice of open science is low. And I think Africa must invest much more in education, science, research, and technology to meet its own developmental targets and claim its status in the world and knowledge economy. It must also strengthen collaboration between university, industry, and uh, celebrate inter-Africa research and scientific corporations. Uh, this is a general overview about uh, what our situation uh, in East Africa. Uh, but generally, we have uh, experiences from a country that develop uh, the use and needs of open science in East Africa with the collaboration with funder and other organizations, like what has happened in Kenya and in Ethiopia, in Tanzania, and uh, Rwanda and other countries. And I think we have experience with joint uh, country and organizational activity for the improvement of open science. Uh, actually, if we need to improve our situation in East Africa, we need to come together. We work to work as one body. And this is our strategy in East African Office of the Association of African Universities. If you see from the forum today, as a presenter, actually, we are not working as a one country. We are working as a region. Even we think regionally. We plan regionally and we implement regionally. We hope that we could be able to keep this spirit in order to do something and good thing for East Africa and to help AAU to achieve its main objective and goals for the development of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Faiza Osman, for your detailed overview of uh, our theme for today's discussion, and of course, the AU Day celebrations. I would call on, please, a minute, I will call on Mr. Felix Enyam now to do his presentation on open data practices and research processes. Mr. Felix, please take the floor. Okay. Uh... Thank you. I'll share my screen now. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. It's okay. Okay. All right. Beautiful. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be invited. And I'm also happy to have the opportunity to share my experience in open data practices in research uh, processes. So I didn't want to do a presentation of theories. I wanted to show us as a family in the African region how I have been able to use open data practices in building research processes and capacity uh, in my region and also in Asia. Uh, thank you. So I'm Felix Emeka Anyam, and I'm with the University of Potaka, the Center for Health and Development, where I work as the research officer and the data scientist. So as we all know, data today is the new oil. And like every oil, we have to find it, we have to extract it, we have to refine it, we have to distribute it and use it to drive economic growth through effective policy making. Data has been there a long time ago, as far back as the fourth millennium BC. And right now at the moment, according to the 2022 survey, we can see that Africa has about 11.5%, that's 601 million people that use the internet. And that's very encouraging. And I think as a continent, we have hope of implementing open science and open data structures. So this is the way people found jobs in the 90s. But today, this is how jobs are found. In the 90s, this is how people find hotels, but today things have improved because of data. This is how people found direction in the past, but today people use the GPS and other 
modern gadget that still utilizes the effectiveness and the usefulness of data. How much does Google hold? Google holds about 10 to 15 exabytes of data. If you put that in equivalent or in perspective, <laughs> that's about 30 million personal computers or 500 gigabytes combined, or three to four football ground or football field. So these are also the benefits of data. You don't have to know the language. You can actually go to a foreign country and use your phone and the Google Translate app, and it could translate the language to English without having to you know, ask anybody what these signposts mean. I don't know if we've heard of the PREDPO. PREDPO is actually a software that the police, they use to predict where crime will happen in a community. And PREDPO has been found to be two times more accurate than even the regular standard operating procedures. These are all the impact and the benefit of open data. We are talking about self-driving today. These are companies that are using data to make impact in the world globally. Zomato is a food chain in India. We know of Uber, Netflix, very popular, Amazon, Alphabet. They are all familiar. In Nigeria, my country, these are several companies and many more tech giants that are making impact in the country and globally through data and technology. I don't know if you've heard of the weatherman umbrella. This umbrella uses data to predict where or when it's going to rain. So that as you're carrying the umbrella, you can actually tell whether it's raining today or it's going to rain tomorrow or it's going to rain in an hour. People have used data to predict poverty. People have used data to actually predict school dropouts in communities. People have used data to predict the poorest places in India and put up interventions to actually stop that from happening. People have used data to predict symptoms of oncology patients. People have used big data to advance the way Parkinson's disease is detected. Data has been used to make prognosis for Parkinson's. You just use the phone, and as you talk on the phone, as you use the phone to take pictures, it has a way of capturing this data and could predict whether that person is susceptible to having Parkinson's disease or not. And also the IBM Watson that a lot of medical doctors around the world are using through artificial intelligence that can help doctors to clock a patient and can help doctors make better decisions when it comes to cancer treatments. And finally, this app from Apple, that can help diagnose autism in children. So open data initiative, what is it about? Open about what we do and open about what we know. Nothing this way anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> so we remember the Ebola crisis. It happened around West Africa within 2014, 2016. This is what happened. Ebola struck and everyone you know, a lot of organizations came into West Africa to help. But guess what happened after then? They collected a lot of data, but when Ebola was eradicated in Nigeria and other places, they all took back the data. Because we have not come to build the capacity to actually maximize this data and cause effect and, 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 and implement its usefulness in our region. Now, there's no need uh, talking about challenges. I, as an individual, I had to find a way to deal with this. And it all started from my attendance of the Co-Data Arudia Research